you know, we have to be very careful not to take society's judgments and criticisms at whatever point we're on because most of those people are not on the same path as you and they're not going to be. And of course, those people are going to judge you because when they judge you, they're trying to affirm that they made the right choice and you made the wrong choice. When they see you going out and trying to become something, build something, uh, create things, live a, a more profitable, bigger, quote unquote, fruitful life, more successful life, they will judge you automatically because they have chosen differently. So people like to be right. You know, people will ride being right into the dirt. So you have to be smart not to fall into that. Like these people who are telling you that, you you know, you take it too serious, you're too intense, you're too into what you do. Those people are always going to say that to you. And then whenever their life is in shambles, when they're 40 something years old and they don't have to show for it, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, well, at least I live some life. What is up, guys? It's Andy Frisella, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society, and welcome to reality, guys. Today, we have a special Saturday edition of Q&AF. Um, we're just going to get right into it, man. What's up? What's going on, man? Not much. Yeah. I guess I should tell people how they can submit their questions. Or just yeah. not to be hoes. Yeah, don't be a hoe, first of all. Yeah, that's first. But second time. of all, if you want to submit your questions for the show, you can do show. You can do show. You can do show show. Uh, one of a couple different ways. The first way is... Guys, email your questions in to askandy at andyfrisella.com. Or you can go on YouTube in the comments section on the Q&AF episodes and ask your questions there and we'll answer some. Now, these questions could be about anything, guys. They can be about what's going on in the world. They could be about how to win, how to be better, how to uh, you know make more money. Most of them are around personal development and entrepreneurship, but we'll answer some uh, pretty much about anything. And uh, yeah. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Got three good ones for you guys. Andy, guys, question number one. Uh, Andy, I'm 22 years old, trying to document my journey in business on Instagram and LinkedIn because my idols, Hermosi, yourself, Milet, et cetera, are always saying how they wish they would have documented the hard and the good. But every time I make a video of the hard, I feel like I'm projecting onto others and I get sympathy messages from people. I hate sympathy and pity. <laughs> Uh, it's part of the reason why I didn't document any of my 75 hard because those 3 a.m. running videos felt like a cry for attention. I uh, I am doing this for myself, but I'm also trying to build a following that will support me through all of my future endeavors and can see my growth. How do you recommend I get around this? What, what's your thoughts on this? You just got to do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you just got to document what you're doing and say the way it is and how people feel about it or how it makes you feel is what it is. You know, uh, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people playing the internet game. Why not you? You see what I'm saying? Uh, you deserve to have a brand. You deserve to play the game as long as you do play the game. And the reality of it is I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, I say things, you know, I try to keep it pretty transparent with everybody. Uh, you know, I really only do my Instagram story, but I did social media for 10, you know, for a decade half your life dude yeah that's yeah no shit that's what i'm saying so like now i just kind of do the story and even when i do keep it transparent and i keep it uh real with people i do get a lot of messages that are like oh man you'll get through it or no shit i'll get through it bro i get through everything so i i understand that i hate that shit too um but you got to remember these people are just trying to be nice and they're trying to support you and and you know uh, ultimately once i get past a little bit of the frustration with it i'm i feel grateful that people actually give a about what I'm doing and what I'm going through. Um, and I think that's just our own, you know, our own positioning on the topic. You know, we don't want sympathy. We don't want extra attention. Uh, but we're also trying to show the journey so that other people will see what it looks like. And then when it comes in, it makes us feel a little weird. Like, dude, people just care, man. They're trying to be supportive and they're trying to be cool. And, you know, the truth of the matter is people are a lot cooler than what you think. Um, than what you think they are. You know, most people are good people. Most people want to support. Most people recognize that you're out here trying to start something new, do something cool. And they just want to give you a little word of encouragement, bro. Just like you want to give them a word of encouragement. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly what you're asking for. In this yeah. Case. And so like, dude, just let it go, you know, mm -hmm. get over that part of it and just keep going and sharing it. And bro, the, the cool thing is, and what you're not going to know is that there's going to be a lot of people who are inspired by that, who are going to come back years and years and years from now and say, man, you know, because of you, I did this or because of you showing this, I did that. You know, that's one of the biggest things from the MF CEO project that I'm grateful for um, is that 
there's so many people who hit me up now, you know, 10 years later, basically, and say, God, dude, you know, when I was listening to you on that, you know, it made me inspired to start this. Now I have this business and I'm, I've got this many employees. I'm doing this. I'm, I live in this kind of like, bro, that's incredibly cool. Yeah. And that would not have come from the fact of, um, that wouldn't have come around had I not shared the journey, you know? So I think it's important for people like you. And also you should recognize the opportunity because you're one of the first people in the, in the world ever that's able to document their journey from the beginning. And you're going to be glad you did when you start getting somewhere and you can go back and say, see, you know what I did? You know, one of the cool things, you know, one of my favorite content creators um, that I consume who's younger than me is Matt Graham, not Matt Graham. He's been on the show a couple of times, mm -hmm. but one of the coolest things about Matt Graham is, is that he documented his, when he was like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, he has these videos and it's really cool, like going back, like when he posts them, and you could see like where what he was trying to do and where he yeah. come from before the testosterone got. Yeah, the and, and, but the cool thing, yeah. yeah, but the cool thing about <laughs> Matt is, is he's so good at the way he presents information and his delivery so strong, and people look at him and they're like, God, how's that guy deliver? Well, he's been doing it since he was fourteen. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, I think that stuff's super cool, and and. uh and I think you might just be reading into it a little bit too much because it's you, right? We're always our own harshest critic, but I would highly encourage you to keep up on that, brother. And when people do step in and they're not giving you sympathy, man, they're, they're encouraging you. They think it's cool. Yeah. You know, getting out there, doing, getting it done, a young person out here hustling, grinding, that's inspiring. It's inspiring to me too. I'll be real with you because, you know, I look around, I see a lot of complacency and a lot of laziness and a lot of bullshit from the younger generations. And so when people like you are showing that you're actually out here trying really hard, that gives me hope. It makes me keep going. It makes me say, dude, all right, what I'm doing matters. And and I know that's true for Ed and Alex too, because we all talk about this. Yeah. So just don't, you guys probably don't even realize that like you guys getting out and documenting your messages and documenting what you do actually helps inspire us as well. It helps us keep going because there's a lot of times where we're trying to make all this content. And even though we get a lot of views and, and those and, and credit and things like that, we still wonder, we're like, does this really matter? Mm. Are people really listening? Like, are people really doing? And so people like you are the reason that we do this shit. So dude, of course show it and you know, keep going, man. I think it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, he's young, man, 22. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, Andy, question number two. Hey, Andy, I'm 24. Uh, and three years into my landscaping business, and I've been doing great. Uh, the business is growing, and I found a way to be very active in the winter months, which a lot of others in my niche just take off. Um, saying this to say, I have been approached by three other business owners, um, and they all want me to consider the possibility of merging with them in a partnership. Um, like, I have to choose one of them mm -hmm. to merge with. Mm -hmm. um, outside of the obvious things, like the books, the financials, and the basics, when it comes to choosing the best partner, what are some things that I should look for? I know I'm young. They know I'm young. Uh, but I don't go head over heels for the sweet talk and razzle dazzle. I, don't, I just don't want to be blindsided. You don't know shit yet, bro. What the f*** are you offering? Okay? Like, I'll be real with you. All right? You, you're 24 years old. You don't know a goddamn thing. All right? So unless you have a whole list of f***ing everything that you're bringing to the table, you should be worried about what you bring to the table, not what the f*** they bring to the table. Mm. Like, if you came to me with that attitude, I'd tell you, get the f*** out of here. Being real. Okay? So you don't want to be blindsided or fall for the sweet talk. Uh, no one's sweet talking you. You're sweet talking them. Let's just be real. Okay? And also, when it comes to forming a business, let me give you the golden rule of forming a business. Uh, number one, you shouldn't be partners with anybody who doesn't bring something that you don't have. Okay, a lot of you guys go out and try to build these businesses with your friends because you want to just be friends in business. That's not an effective partnership. You also go out and partner with someone who wants to be the CEO when you want to be the CEO, and wants to be the face when you want to be the face. And you guys partner for all the same reasons, all right, which are the wrong ones. Here's the deal when it comes to getting a partner. What do they bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? Are those things complementary? Sometimes you bring the talent, the knowledge, the, the, uh, the voice, and then other people bring the back end and, and the money, and you're able to put that together and work together. But the problem is, is people don't look at it like that up front. They look at it like it's going to be this fun, exciting, amazing journey that is just going to be good all the time. And they end up partnering with the wrong people who compete over attention, who compete over the credit, who are doing it for the wrong reasons. And that's why you hear this thing. Don't ever be partners with somebody that you're friends with. I don't know. I'm 
partners with my f-ing best friend in the whole world and my and my brother. And I mean, it works. Uh, yeah, because you know why? Because they're skilled in things that I'm not skilled at, and they all work together. So like you know, but dude, this this thing of like that you're saying about I don't want to be sweet talked, bro. You need to learn to speak a little bit differently. Because if I even, I would just tell you get the f- out. Mm. I don't want to deal with that ego. I don't want to deal. You're 24. You haven't done shit. What have you done? What's it say he's done? Uh, he said he found a niche. Uh, he found a way to be very active in the winter months. Where oh, really? Everybody else takes. That off. sounds f- great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds super. F- amazing you're for first person ever to figure something out to do in the winter like you're not even telling me what the f- you do man you know what i'm saying what what is what is the re- i don't understand i don't even understand the real question here uh yeah just like i mean he understands he should be like you know asking about the books because he's been approached by three other businesses i guess landscaping businesses okay um and he's just saying like outside of the books of financials and the the fundamental things to like talk about and discuss uh-huh. what should he be looking for in a partner someone who can do the shit that you can't do very well Someone who could bring the resources that you don't have. Yeah. Someone who can e- execute on things that you're not good at. And you should partner with them. But like walking around thinking that you got the keys to the castle, bro, you ain't the first motherfucker to figure out something to do in the winter. I we'll promise you that. Go talk to Ricky. Yeah, right. My guy. <laughs> right. Who's the best landscaper that I know. Okay? So. Yeah, I didn't even know grass could get cut in November. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. When you guys submit questions, submit some detailed questions, man. I'll help you. I'll give you the right answer but you just telling me some summary bullshit i'm not going to help you or anybody else make the questions as detailed as possible if we have to edit them down we'll edit them down but the reality is is i can't help you if you don't tell me what the you do okay to me i'm going to tell you this most of you and i get i get frustrated because i get asked this shit all the time all right no offense to you dude but I get asked this all the time. I get approached by these young kids who are ambitious, who think that they're really something. Motherfucker, everybody thinks they're something. Everybody thinks that they're great. Everybody thinks they have a skill set nobody has. Everybody thinks that they have the ability to do things no one else can do. And it just isn't true. You're, a, you're one of a gazillion motherfuckers that can do what the f*** you're doing. So what do you bring to the table? What do you offer? And making that list compelling will allow you to find the best partner possible. And you should look at their list with the same scrutiny that you look at your list. All right. What do they bring? What do they offer? Maybe they bring the money. Maybe you don't have any money for equipment. Maybe they bring the money for equipment. But that doesn't mean that because you run the business and they brought the money that you get to know 98% of the business because you're doing the work. That's not the way a partnership works. This dude brings the money. You bring the shit. And it's 50-50 or 49-51 or something that you agree upon. You know, there's just all kinds of ridiculous misunderstandings about how partnerships should be formed. Most of them are f***ed up because people are idealists in the beginning. In the beginning of a relationship, it's always the easiest. It's always easy in the beginning to say, man, we're going to conquer the world. We're going to do, bro, when I opened something with Superstores back in 1999, I thought we would be like on boats and hoes in like six months, bro. (laughs) Like I thought I'd be driving a Lamborghini in like f***ing six months. And that was without internet culture. Yeah. (laughs) And you know what? You know what happened between the time that I actually got a Lamborghini, which was 12 years in? A lot of shit. It was hard. And I got my ass beat, and so did Chris. And good thing was, is that Chris had skills that I didn't have, and I had skills that he didn't have. And that's what created an effective partnership. And then, you know, uh, when we started First Form, we brought in Sal. Sal has skills that neither one of us have. You see what I'm saying? And we didn't just say, hey, man, uh, I like you and let's be partners. This is going to be fun because I promise you, bro, it ain't going to be fun. It's going to be much harder than you could possibly imagine. It's going to take much longer than you could possibly comprehend. And these people that you partner with have to bring in skills that you don't have. Otherwise, you're going to get beat by people who do have that. Like if you have like, let's say we have a, a quarterback. All right. And then we got another quarterback and then we got another quarterback, which is usually the case when it comes to starting a small business. Everybody wants to be the CEO. Everybody wants to be the man, bro. Being the CEO ain't fun. It fucking sucks. Okay. Because you get fucking beat for everybody else's stupid motherfucking decisions. And you guys all want that role, but you only want it because you want the like shares, the recognition for it. When in reality, bro, it's the most brutal fucking role you can have i would much rather in hindsight have taken the role of back end dude mm. than face guy much 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 rather yeah, have well, done chris, that. chris 
Chris has a good time. He, you know what? <laughs> but Chris is good at what he does. Sal's great at what he does. Chris, Chris, everybody works, brings yeah. their value. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the point is, is when people are young, they try to start these little organizations and these businesses for the reason of being cool and having credit and having a title and having a name on a business card. Dude, I call that playing business. And you know what happens to people who play business? They get their ass beat by people who are actually doing business, who don't worry about things like title and don't worry about things like credit and worry more so about kicking ass and putting out the best product. That's the point. Yeah. So when you decide who you're going to be partners with and who you're going to stick to, you have to look at it. What does this person bring that I can't do? And if they can't bring anything that you can't already do, then you shouldn't partner with them no matter how much you like them. Yeah. Partnership should be a true blending of a strate strategical, tactical advantages. Not, hey man, we're just gonna do this and split it. Mm -hmm. Like that's not how, that'll never work. Yeah. Because what'll end up happening is as the company grows, if you're lucky enough for it to have it grow, you'll be competing with this other person over the credit. I don't give a f about the credit. I think everybody in this room and in this building knows that. Now, do I get a lot of the credit? I do, but the truth of the matter is I don't care. It's actually them. Those guys do all the work. I do. I do the organization and the the steering of the ship. I'm I'm in the bucket at the top of the Titanic, saying steer left so we don't hit that iceberg. Right. Okay. That's my job at this point in time. And 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 dude, I don't care about the awards and the accolades or any of that shit. And I think that's what actually has made me uh, and and made our organizations, all of them, uh, successful, is because the the there's no real thirst or hunger for the credit like my brother doesn't give a fuck. chris doesn't give a fuck. i don't give a fuck. we're just trying to win yeah and we yeah. use our skill sets skill sets together to do that yeah i thought i'm one i'm like reading over this question and i'm wondering like do you think he like maybe he was saying that in the sense of like because he is so young that he doesn't want to get taken advantage of by older sharks in the business well, how the fuck are you gonna get taken advantage of when you don't have shit yeah hmm. that's my point yeah you, you think you got shit. You don't have shit yet, bro. So how are you going to be taken advantage of if you didn't bring nothing to the table? Right. That's my point. Right. Dude, yeah. there's, listen, there's this person client. Listen, dude, got. there is a problem with ego with the younger generation of operators. These guys think they're much better. And by the way, so did I. So I'll give you that. When I was 24, I thought I was the shit. I walked around like I had a 20 foot dick and I knew all this shit and I could kick everybody's ass in business and you know what i was a idiot so i'll give you that i i was the same way that's how i know you're like that <laughs> all right so stop overestimating your own skills be honest build your skill set and match it with someone who has a complimentary skill set i love it man yeah i love it guys andy question number three uh andy i'm 26 years old i'm a man uh, I don't know why you put that. We went from 22 to 24, yeah, 26. No, nice we were right up the ladder here. I, it wasn't even intentional. Uh, but yeah, he puts in parentheses male. So thank, thank, I guess he just wanted to clarify him, that. He, him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the rule. <coughs> if you put your pronouns in the question, I'm not oh, answering that. No, yeah. I, I wouldn't even put it up there. Uh, Andy, I'm 26 years old. And in what I would call my own stage of sleeping in the back of the supplement store. I have a very small construction company that I finally ventured on my own this year. My social circle is nearly non-existent. Um, I'm humbly a pretty good looking guy. I'm in great shape, good money. I haven't been on a real date in two years. I have a hard time going out. I feel like I'm wasting my time. You are. Uh, I create enemies in my head out of the people uh, just to drive me to surpass them. And when I do, I'm looking at the next thing. I feel completely behind in life no matter what. Um, although I don't necessarily feel happy, this is the thing that brings me the most satisfaction, this mentality. I just feel like now is not the time to, quote unquote, live life. Did you feel like this or am I developing some unhealthy habits? I know to this day you still feel behind, but does the chip on your shoulder go away? Do you feel like your guard is down and it's not always a competition? What's your thoughts on this, Andy? You, f you feel like you're creating unhealthy habits according to whom? According to a bunch of people that are going to be in debt their whole life, a bunch of people who are going to struggle their whole life, a bunch of people who are going to get married and have kids and get divorced and f up their whole entire existence because they rushed into it. Is that, is that who you're talking about? 
mm-hmm. because I would ignore those people. All right. And if I'm being completely honest, it sounds to me like you have all the markings of being someone who is going to be highly driven and highly successful. And what I have to tell you is that it is going to be lonely and it is going to be frustrating and you are going to feel like an outcast and you are going to feel like no one gets it. And no one understands. And that's because you're rare and the rare person is the one who builds greatness. All right. If everybody else thought like you, we, we it wouldn't be rare. Okay. Um, so let's think about this for a second. First of all, I want to talk about the dating thing. Uh, your value as a man in reality, whether people want to admit this or not, whether people get upset about this or not, I don't f- care is not going to come until you're like ba- probably in your mid thirties. All right. That's reality because when women are young, they will date older men who are making more money, who are doing, you know, things with their life and uh, they're going to shit on you. And that's the reality of being a young, ambitious man. You're probably going to get told by a bunch of girls like I did, uh, you know, hey, you know, when are you going to get serious? You know, this is this is a pipe dream. You know, this is never going to work out. When are you going to start taking your life serious and get to get it to your shit together and all this shit? And you're going to you're going to have women tell you that um, who are, you know, trying to chase older men who are in their 30s who have a little bit more life underneath their belt. Right. And uh and what, what you don't want to have happen, and I'm not saying you shouldn't date, but what you don't want to have happen is you to get locked up with some woman who is less than your potential because you did it when you didn't have shit and you were, you were broke and you were struggling and you just took what you could get because you didn't want to be alone. All right? Mm-hmm. So that's something to think about. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say you should do this or should do that, but I will tell you this. When you're... When you have your a little bit more momentum going and you have a little bit more going for your life and you're doing a little bit better in your life, you're going to get a better selection of potential partners in a relationship. And it's important that you know that that, that will eventually come. Um, and you don't, I don't think anybody wants to settle down with someone who's less than what their potential is. Um, but a lot of people get mad when I say this or when anybody says this because it's, it, you know, people make other decisions, but I'm just telling you your value as a, as a man, uh, you will have better selection of possible partners a little bit further down the road from where you are at 26. Um, as far as feeling like an outcast, you're going to feel like an outcast, bro. Anybody who's driven like you are, anybody who's wanting to win as bad as you are, anybody who's putting in the work the way that you are, they're going to be looked at as some sort of weirdo. Uh, that's how I was my whole life. I was looked at as I had my priorities out of whack, um, I was not living, you know, I got told that I, I needed to have more balance, I needed to have more fun, I needed to take it easy, I needed to not care as much, I needed to not be as intense, I needed to not blah, 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 blah. And I got told that by a bunch of people who, quite frankly, uh, at this point in their life, at the same age as me, are struggling very hard, okay? And I have my struggles too, I'm not saying I don't. Uh, and that's another thing. I think we gotta recognize that you know, we trade struggles. You know, what's what problems do you want to have? Do you want to have the problems of not being able to afford to do shit? Do you want to have the problems of being stuck with a woman who's, you know, not the quality of the woman that you could potentially get later on? Do you want to, like, do you want to regret not doing what you could have done with your life? Um, or do you want to have the problems of, you know, maybe you can't afford shit. Maybe you can't, and maybe you maybe you look back and you say, man, you know what? I missed out on a couple things. You know what I mean? Yeah. But here's the cool thing. At least when you miss out on a couple things back then, you got something to show for it. The other way around, you don't got nothing to show for it. So that's how I've always looked at it. And yes, I'll be real. Like there's things that I look at when I examine my life and I say, man, you know, I wish I would have done a little bit more traveling or I wish I would have done a little bit more uh, because in hindsight, I would have been the same place that I'm at. I'm just keeping it real with you guys. Um, but also, at the same time, I get satisfaction out of doing what I do. I like what I do. And and I do feel like I'm wasting time when I'm not doing it. And uh, I, can, I can totally relate to someone with that mentality. And I think that, you know, we have to be very careful not to take society's judgments and criticisms at whatever point we're on because most of those people are not on the same path as you and they're not going to be. And of course those people are going to judge you because when they judge you, they're trying to affirm that they made the right choice and you made the wrong choice. When they see you going out and trying to become something, build something, uh, create things, 
live uh, a more profitable, you know, bigger, quote unquote, fruitful life, more successful life, they will judge you automatically because they have chosen differently. Mm -hmm. So people like to be right. You know, look at the look at the politics in the world. People people are literally arguing over what's going on, watching the president of the United States dismantle this country because they wanted to be right about Donald Trump. That, you know, people will ride being right into the dirt. Yeah. So you have to be f smart not to f fall into that. Like these people who are telling you that, you you know, you take it too serious, you're too intense, you're too, you're too into what you do, uh, you're too focused, you're this, you're that. Those people are always going to say that to you. And then whenever their life is in shambles, when they're 40 something years old and they don't have shit to show for it, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, well, at least I live some life. Yeah. You know, and I like at least I had that van yeah, when I was 20. Right, bro. You're not going to care. Yeah. You're going to be like, cool, man. Like I can do whatever I want. And so, you know, there's a trade. You're trading the comforts and conveniences of a normal life right now for an exceptional life later. And then people will like to say stuff, stuff like this, too. Well, what happens if you get sick and die? Well, then you can get sick and die, man. I mean, do you, what do you think Kobe Bryant says? You think Kobe Bryant, if you called him up on the phone right now and say, hey, Kobe, do you regret your life? He's going to say, no. He's like, I went hard as f bro. I did everything I could. I worked my ass off and I did the best that I could with the time that I got. And nobody could take that away from me. He's a f legend because of it. But people will say, oh, you know, you he needed to live his life or he needed to do this or that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, bro, it's the peanut gallery. And we don't listen to the peanut gallery. We don't f take what they have to say serious. Those people are on a different path than you. Um, you have to do what's best for you. And I would do it with intensity because I'll be real with you. All the things that this person asked, those are all things I felt the whole entire time, every single time. So uh, I, I, I think you have a lot of the markings of someone who is obsessively, who will be obsessively great at what they do. And um, people are going to judge you for that, bro. I mean, I get judged constantly for that. I mean, just look at some of the comments on some of the videos that are posted about me on the internet that people post in short form. This guy's f crazy. This guy got mental health prop. No, motherfucker, I don't have mental health problems. I have the f problems that you wish you f had, and that's why you're talking that shit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so it's you know, oh, it looks sounds like some unhealed trauma. Yeah, I got some unhealed trauma with a big ass fat wallet right here, baby. Not bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what the. F I'm, I'm just saying, I get like everybody yeah. wants to knock for every fucking thing. Yeah. You know, like at least if you're dedicated, you walk out with a prize. You don't walk out with a life that's in shambles. This idea of a perfect life, of perfect happiness, and perfect family, and perfect balance, it's fucking bullshit. We got to pick and choose what things we want, and we got to go after those things. And we shouldn't judge each other for those things because not everybody's built for the path that you're trying to go on. When I was younger, I used to judge the people that didn't go on the path as like quote unquote losers, right? Yeah. But now I don't do that anymore because I realize that like, dude, that's just their path yeah. and that's okay. And we just call them liberals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look man, <laughs> I, I, I respect and value anybody's decision. Here's where I don't value it. What I can't stand that's a huge pet peeve of mine that we see in society right now is this idea that so, people's lives are in this like shitty spot, right? They don't have any money. They got very little possessions. They they can't really pay for their shit. And then they pretend like that's what they wanted the whole time. Mm. That's what I don't like. What I don't like is people adopting their life into and, and then lying about how they got there. Like, bro, just say, hey, man, it didn't go the way I wanted, mm. but now I'm doing the best I can. You see what I'm like saying? Trying to fool us that they're shitty. Yeah, bro, I fool. hate that shit. Yeah. That's where all these... Yeah. moral warriors on the internet come from their life sucks they can't afford shit they live in a shitty house they got a shitty partner they drive a shitty car they go to a job they hate and then they pretend like this is what the f they wanted f you man you think i'm f stupid and then they get on the internet and say all kinds of ignorant shit about anybody who's doing anything i mean dude look at anybody successful on the internet and then read the comments about them and you have all these f losers saying yeah but you know i bet it's blah 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 you don't f know any of that you're just talking shit because they got something you ain't got you chose not to do yeah and you chose it dude yeah. and that's okay i don't care that's what you chose but like don't sit here and try to villainize everybody who's out here doing something because they don't have the life that you have because you up your own life yeah by the way you could change it today <laughs>
if you would just get out of that victim mentality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like, right. bro, do you not notice this? Do you know what I'm talking I about? Exactly this moral warrior about, culture that exists on the internet that judges every single person that does anything outside of the norm as some sort of f***ed up person. That's how they justify their excuse of not doing it. Get the it. F out of here, dude. Yeah. No one's buying it's not, it. You're not fooling me, bro. Yeah, you're not fooling anybody, and you just look like a little pussy bitch in the comments. Yeah. Like, real talk. I'm eating Vienna sausages because I, they're but so I, good. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I you, chose you it. was a tree, bro? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm eating Vienna sausages because I chose to be humble. Yeah. Shut the f*** up, nah, bro. bro. I don't give a f*** how humble you are. You ain't eating that. Dude. <laughs> That's called. It's a joke. bunch of fake humility. It's a it's a misunderstanding of humility. The truth of the matter is, you can't even be humble unless you're great. Okay, because to be humble, you have to be great. That means you have to say, "Oh, this is I'm doing this, but this doesn't make me any better than anybody else." Right. Right. So you have to be doing big shit to even be humble. So you can't just be a loser and be humble. That's automatic. Yeah. That that's like you're that's automatic default. That's the opposite of humble. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like I'm. I'm, I'm, and by the way, people don't even know the difference between meek and humble, you know, meek and modest and humble. There's three different things. You know what I mean? Oh, not humble much? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. I'm the <laughs> MS CEO, bitch. I'm not very humble. But you can do that too. Yeah. Sign up for my course, 999. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, anybody who runs around with a license plate on his car that says MS CEO probably ain't that humble. You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> It's on a couple of them too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they gave me two plates. I want everybody to know. My point is, is that bro, it's not about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a humility. Really, isn't isn't about any of that. It's about understanding this. You're not as great as the results that you're producing. You're no different than anybody else. That person over there, they could do the exact same things that you're doing if they did if they did the exact same actions. That's what humility is. It's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking more of others and just understanding that the reason you are where you are is because you took certain actions, not because you're gifted or you're great or you're better than, right? So most people don't even understand yeah. the true thinking of what humble really means. Yeah. But then they try to weaponize it on the internet. Oh, you're successful, so you're not humble. Yeah, you're right, man. Fuck off. <laughs> Whatever you say. Yeah, right. You know, but you're eating Vienna, Vienna wieners and I'm eating steak. Right. You know? <laughs> Vienna wieners. How them wieners, bro? <laughs> I'm just being real, I man. It, man. I love it, dude. Love we should it. just start, dude. We should start a segment. You know how we have cruise the comments yeah. in CTI. You go cruise the no. Go find. We'll go find the. You're gonna do this, Zishan. We're gonna go find the asshole comments on the success. The the, the success posts. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, and we're gonna put them on the internet right here, and we're gonna tear them up. No, I love it. Yeah. So I we're gonna it. find all the little humble warriors. And then we're going to put them on the screen and we're going to make fun of them. I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah. I'm down. It sounds like a good call them out for their bullshit. So I'm so tired of it, dude. It's so discouraging. Like to the, like these are three young people we answered on this, on this. All uh, trying to win. Yeah. All trying to win. All trying to create greatness and everybody they know in their life's trying to take it away from them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bro, that's f***ed up. Like, and you no wonder why people don't win. You know, it's because they don't root for winning. Yeah. It's a crabs in the bucket, bro. Yeah, bro. What's we got an episode on that, don't we? Crabs in the bucket. I'm just tired of seeing it, dude. Like we should be encouraging young people to win. What is it? Episode 59 of Real AF. Go listen to that shit. For real. Stop right now because the show is over and go listen to episode 59. All right. Peace out.